Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to review the BenQ PD3220U designer monitor from the perspective of a visual content creator, someone who does photo and video editing, graphic design and digital art. Now this video is going to be quite long, so if you want to jump to different sections of the video, you can do so using timestamps in the video description below. Let's do the unboxing first. Now this is a huge monitor. The effective screen size is 31.5 inches. The current monitor that I'm using is the BenQ SW2700 PT. By the way, this is actually a review unit that was sent to me from BenQ. I do not need to return this, but I'm not paid for this review though. So let's see what we have here. This is the power cable. Depending on where you buy the monitor, it should come with the appropriate head. Here in Singapore, we use the 3 pin. This is the USB 3 data cable. Mini display port to full size display port. Full size HDMI. Thunderbolt 3 cable because this is a monitor with Thunderbolt 3. This is the base of the stand. It's actually quite big. I like the matte textured surface, the rounded corners. And this is very flat. I like it because I like to put a lot of things on the base, like my Bluetooth speaker, memory cards, my styluses, my wallet. On the back, there are six rubber feet, and this is the screw to screw onto the support, which is also very big. So this is cylindrical in shape, and there is this hook here for cable management. This is the hotkey part. This is a wide remote for quick access to the on-screen menus. This is the online warranty card. The serial number is behind. Nowadays, you can check the warranty period on their website. And here in Singapore, the warranty period for the monitor is 3 years. Here we have safety instructions, quick start guide. And on this CD, we have the user menu, drivers and PDF reader. Now this monitor is plug and play, so I'm not sure what the drivers are for. This monitor is already calibrated at the factory, so out of the box, the colors, they should look fine. This is the calibration report with all the measurements. I will do additional calibration because I need the colors on this monitor to match the monitors that I'm using at my office. And this is the back of the monitor. It's actually quite heavy. It's 7.9 kg. You can VESA mount this. The measurement is 10 by 10 centimeters. When you're looking at the monitor from the front, the power and manual controls, they are on the right side. This four-way toggle will let you navigate the on-screen manual easily. These are the downward facing ports, two USB 3.1 downstream, one USB 3.1 upstream. This is for the hot key puck, two HDMI version 2 and one full-size display port version 1.4. As we continue to the right side, we have two Thunderbolt 3 ports. This has power delivery, 85 watts, so you can use this to charge your USB-C devices like your MacBook or your tablets. This is just a normal Thunderbolt 3. After you have connected all the cables, you can actually cover this part up by using the flap that's provided. Just slot it in and push it down. That's what those holes are for. On the right side of the monitor, just above where the power button is, we have this USB 3.1 Type-C, the standard USB port, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Let's put the monitor together now. Just slide this in and have it click. I've just set up the monitor on my table and it looks massive. Now while setting it up, I notice a few things missing. First of all, the shading hood, which is exceptionally useful, but this model, it doesn't support the mounting of shading hood, unfortunately. So that's a bummer for me. And there is no carrying handle for the stand behind. And of course the missing SD card reader. So right now I'm actually using this USB hub connected to my computer rather than the two USB ports there. And the base is actually quite big, but I'm able to push the stand and the monitor all the way back. So the monitor can actually be quite close to the wall. 
and I'm one arm's length away from the monitor. So this is a good distance for me when it comes to using a screen this size. All right, I've been using this monitor for almost two weeks. So now I have a pretty good idea on its quality. So the most important thing about this monitor is this is a true 10 bit color display, which means you do need to have the proper hardware, such as the graphics card and software in order to display those colors and work with them. I have used a calibrator to calibrate the screen and managed to get a readout of 94% sRGB, 78% ODB RGB and 72% NTSC. This monitor is said to support AQ color technology from BenQ, which is to say that it's supposed to have accurate color reproduction and 94% sRGB support it's quite good, although lower compared to the 99% I was expecting. So this is effectively an sRGB display that's targeted at creatives who are producing work for the web. So for example, you can be a photographer, video editor, graphic designer, or digital artist. If your work is going to the web for online display, this is monitor you can consider getting. If you are working for print, I recommend you get a monitor that has Adobe RGB, especially if you need to compare physical proofs against what you have on screen. The monitors that support Adobe RGB from BenQ are the SW series, such as the SW271 that I reviewed a few months ago. I wasn't able to measure DCI-P3 because my calibration software doesn't have that functionality, but this monitor is said to support up to 95% DCI-P3. Viewing angles are fantastic. So if you are viewing the monitor from the side, from an angle, there shouldn't be any color shift. So I can tilt the display like this and this gray uh, color that I filled onto the canvas, the colors, they shouldn't shift. And this is actually quite important when you are working with a display this large. With monitors that have very lousy viewing angles, I can fill this screen with gray, but as you are looking at the screen and looking down, this part can be gray, but here it can be white. So that is obviously unacceptable for graphic design work. But here, beam angles, fantastic, no matter where you look at the display. This display has adjustability for the height, tilt, and even rotation. So this is great for people who work with portrait photos or vertical pages most of the time because this will allow you to see more of your work. The thing is, this is a huge monitor. Unless your page or your photograph is very vertical, um, if you display a vertical page using the horizontal format like this, you will still be able to see a lot of your file and at a good size. This is a fantastic monitor for graphic design work. For example, here I have a page design where the width is 54 centimeters. Now this monitor, the width is 70 centimeters or 27 inches. So if you are working with anything less than the 70 centimeters, you will be able to see your file at 100% zoom at 100% the actual size. So if I were to print this out, this size that you're looking at will match the actual printout, which is fantastic because you can use this to check the legibility, the size of the fonts, to make sure that they are at the precise um, font sizes. And basically you can look at your page at a glance at a whole. And with the 4K resolution, all the visuals on screen will be sharp, the photos, the graphics, the fonts, and this resolution allows you to pack a lot of palettes on the side as well. So this is great for productivity. In the office, I do print design. At home, I do watercolor, photo, and video editing. So this is a watercolor sketch that I drew and painted a few weeks ago. This is the original. So this is the scan and this is the original. The colors, they look quite similar, but there are some slight differences. So I may still need to tweak this slightly. Now, for the type of work that I do, I need this to look the same as the original so that when I send this to print, I get a printout. The printout will look exactly the same as my digital file and the printout will look exactly the same as my original. So for me, color accuracy and color calibration, they are very important in my workflow. Now this is an A5 size sketch. I used to scan at 300 dpi, but 
That is no longer sufficient for a 4K monitor like this. If I scan this at 300 dpi, that file will not even fill up the screen when I view it at 100%. But this was scanned at 600 dpi, so now when I view it at 100%, it fills up the whole screen and because of the resolution um, I'm able to see details that um, are quite difficult to see even uh, in real life when I'm looking at my own sketch so this allows me to check for uh, certain uh, errors or discrepancies issues such as um, those tiny little dots there which should not be there I can also see the paper texture um, in great detail. Editing photos on this display is also a very satisfying experience. So all these photos were taken with the aspect ratio 3 to 2. So let's open one. Now at 3 to 2 aspect ratio, you're going to see some bars on the left and right. If you were to crop this to 16 by 9, let me show you how it's going to look. So at 16 by 9, this is going to basically take up the whole uh, screen because 16 by 9 is, happens to be the aspect ratio of this monitor. The original photograph was 16 megapixels, so I have now cropped away some of the photograph. Now this photograph is now scaled down to fit the screen. Let me show you the photograph at 100%. So notice when I click on the screen, the photograph zooms to 100% but you are still looking at almost the whole photograph so that's the thing with 4k it allows you to see a lot more of your work so what this means when you are editing photos is you're almost going to see a one-to-one -one pixel representation of your work and everything will be very sharp very detailed and this is really nice to work with Notice this white haze thing going on. That's because I have a strong light source coming from the right side. And this is the anti-glare matte surface coating on the display. If I turn the monitor away from the window, now I have a more accurate representation of the colors and contrast. Let me turn the monitor back so that you can see the white haze and the anti-glare. So this is where I really miss the shading hood from uh, SW2700PT. So the shading hood will be able to block out the light source and produce better colors and contrast. So I really miss the shading hood. The brightness of this display is supposed to be 300 nits, which is kind of low, but definitely more than sufficient for use indoors. This monitor is also very nice to work with for video editing because of the 4K resolution. This allows you to put a lot of palettes on the side so they can access them without hiding them. And you can still see a lot of your work. You can stack multiple layers of timelines and when working with the timeline, you don't have to scroll because this lets you see a lot of your timeline. And also when selecting clips, Again, because of the resolution, it allows you to see more clips, so you don't have to scroll up and down to find your clips. And this is a 4K resolution, so when you are playing your file, you can actually view it at 4K, the actual resolution that will appear uh, online. The ND glare to me is actually quite distracting, so I actually have to uh, put my curtains up to block out the unwanted light. With my other monitor, with the shading hood, I don't have to do that. This monitor actually has a lot of features, so let me run through some of them. So this is where you can choose the input source. You can connect multiple input to the computer to get picture in picture, picture beside picture. You can connect four input source to the monitor as well, and each display will be 1080p on this 4K screen. Now for this monitor, you can only adjust the brightness, you cannot adjust the gamma or the color temperature. And here you can choose between the different color modes like DCI-P3, HDR, sRGB, Adobe RGB. As you switch between the color modes, the color profile of the monitor will change instantly to let you see uh, how it actually looks. 
See this M book here? Now this display actually has a color profile designed specially for people who use MacBooks so that you can match the colors on this screen as closely to your MacBook. Audio, well, they actually have speakers in the monitor, but the audio quality is really lousy. It's like those walkie-talkie uh, quality. This KVM switch allows you to connect your keyboard and mouse to the monitor so that you can work with multiple uh, computers, like two computers, one a Mac, another maybe a Windows. This is where you can customize the hotkey puck, which is actually quite useful, and some additional system settings. I've already configured the shortcuts for the hotkey puck, so now I can use the dial to control the volume of my earphones that is currently connected to the side of the monitor. If I don't have this, this will control the volume of the speakers in the monitor. And here there are three buttons. I have configured them for input source, so when I press number one here, this will go to the Thunderbolt connection. This will go to the display port and this will be the HDMI. Let's connect the Thunderbolt 3 cable to the iPad Pro. Now this cable has 85 watt power delivery so it's going to fast charge whatever device you connect to it. And the iPad Pro is known to have very slow charging speed but when connected to this, it charges really fast. And when you connect a MacBook or MacBook Pro to this cable, it also allows the monitor to be used as a hub. So now you can attach other USB devices to the monitor and it will connect to your MacBook Pro. If you want to have a dual monitor set up, you would need to have another Thunderbolt 3 monitor so that you can use a Thunderbolt 3 cable to daisy change uh, the two monitors together. So this monitor is quite versatile. Right now there is nothing happening because there are two input sources connected to the monitor so the monitor doesn't know which one to connect to. So let me just press the button 1 to connect to my iPad Pro. So right now it's doing the mirror mode. With the iPad Pro there is very limited display uh, settings. If you connect a MacBook Pro or MacBook or a Windows with Thunderbolt 3 then you're going to have more display options like mirror or extended display. Let me just uh, play a movie. So if you play a movie, um, this is the Apple TV on the iPad Pro, it's going to use the full screen of the display. But if you are just doing normal work on your iPad, you're going to see black bars on the left and on the, on the left and on the right. I'm showing you this screenshot from the movie Logan because I want to talk about HDR. So this monitor supports HDR10 and I do see some HDR effect. Uh, when I look at the hair here, I can see the highlights in the shadow areas here and here. With a monitor that does not support HDR, I will just see black here. But here I can see actually see some highlights in the shadow details. It's not as good compared to some other really top quality HDR monitors that I have seen, but for HDR10, this quality um, it's good enough. It's important to note that if you want to play HDR, your source video must be a HDR video. So with HDR10 support, you can also use this monitor to edit your HDR photos and videos. For backlight bleeding, I do see some issues. By the way, my room is not completely dark right now. So at the lower left, I see three small areas of backlight issues. And here on the bottom right side, I see some slight issues here with this area. And at the top right, this is a bit more obvious compared to the bottom right. And when playing a movie, it's also noticeable, even with the stronger contrast of the movie against the black. So this particular unit I have seems to have some backlight issues. Now if I were to see this level of backlight with a monitor that I have bought, I probably won't send it back. This is still alright, not like a major deal breaker yet. I did not see any dead pixels, which is great. 
And this is an IPS panel, so you can expect IPS glow. The blacks are not going to be like the black blacks you see on OLED screens. Other things I want to mention are when you connect your Android phone or tablet using the Thunderbolt 3 cable, it's going to charge the device, but the computer will not be able to detect the device because Android it doesn't support Thunderbolt 3. I'm not sure what would happen if you connect an iPhone though, because I don't have an iPhone to test. So if you want to transfer data using the cable, you have to use the usual the normal USB type C cable and connect it to the USB port on the side. And if you connect the iPad using the USB port on the side, it's going to be detected by the computer, but because this is not Thunderbolt 3, it will not be able to output video to the monitor. So if you want to output video, you have to use Thunderbolt 3. Alright, to conclude, let me give you the pros and cons. I like the design, I like the thin bezels, the overall look, the build quality is fantastic. As an sRGB monitor, the color accuracy is quite good. I measured 94%, which is not too far away from 99%, so that's still acceptable for me. So this is a monitor that is good for creatives who output their work online. I like that there is Thunderbolt 3 support, so now you can use your Thunderbolt 3 devices with this and make full use of all the Thunderbolt 3 functionality like file transfer speed, um, the ability to charge your device, and also you can output video signal. And if you want to use two monitors, you can use a Thunderbolt 3 cable to connect an extra monitor to it. So um, that's quite useful. There is also the normal USB-C, uh, USB 3. And there is a lot of functionality you can choose from using the on-screen menu and the hotkey part. It's actually quite useful this time around because you can set customized shortcuts to the buttons here. So those are the things that I like. For the things that I don't like, well, there are some backlight issues for a monitor at this price range, which is quite pricey. I don't really uh, like to see those backlight issues. There is no shading hood included. I'm a big fan of the shading hood because it's really useful. The audio quality is not good. I'm not sure why they included speakers with this monitor. They should have included the SD card slot instead. And oh, there's no carrying handle behind on the stand, which I find to be quite useful as well, but um, that's a minor issue. I try to make this review as detailed as possible, so I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below, and if I have any updates to my video review, I'll put all that in my text review, which you can find in the video description below. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video. Bye!